Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to CBC's Canada House. Uh, for those who couldn't be here today, we're uh, trying to involve them by tweeting. So whatever you're enjoying today, please tweet with the hashtag fall for CBC and uh, people will be jealous that they're not here and that they will, then they will show up. Uh, I'm Steve Patterson from The Debaters, but that's not important. <laughs> What's important is this is the cast, of course, and the stars of Mr. D on CBC. <laughs> Just completed its fourth season, uh, and we can't wait for that, which is four years in Canadian television is like 40. American, so it is an incredible <laughs> success story, and uh, we're just here to learn a little bit about it. I will introduce the uh, members of the panel, though you should know them if you watch CBC. <laughs> but uh, first of all, Bobby, the PE teacher, Naomi Sikas, right over here. We have uh, Mr. was going to be late for the panel, uh, but he just arrived in the nick of time. Simon, the science teacher, Mark Little. How the hell gentlemen. are you? <laughs> Let's do this! Yeah. Mark, keeping it PG for the kids. Uh, we have uh, Lisa, Lisa Lauren Hammersley, right over here. <laughs> Mr. Malik, Sharesh John, right here. And you couldn't really do a Mr. D panel of service without Mr. D, Jerry D, right here. So I've, I've got some questions. I know that you've got some questions. We're going to save time for those. We've had some random questions inserted in this. We're not even sure if it pertains to Mr. D or not, but uh, we're going we're gonna to go through it. But first question, right out of the gate, we might as well go to the creator of the show. Jerry, how great is it to have a Canadian show, any show, a show on for four years, just completed the fourth season. How's it feel, my friend, uh, as the creator uh, of this? Yeah, we, we realize, I think, every year that we're lucky to uh, be in that situation. I think one season for networks is things look good on paper, this looks like a good idea. Um, the second season is often, you know, uh, if, if it didn't come out of the gate, you know, crazy. Ours did. And then ours tailored off a bit, um, but uh, and now it seems to have picked back up. But I think when you get a fourth season, it means that it's doing well. There's no uh, token, you know, fourth season. Let's no. give them a fourth. <laughs> what the hell? Um, so it's great. We're, you know, it's a tremendous group of writers, a tremendous cast, some of which are here today, and uh, it certainly uh, makes you know everybody's job easier when there's just a lot of talent. So uh, we went out. Uh, and tried to hire the funniest people, as opposed to maybe actors and trying to make them funny. We went the other way, we got a lot of funny cast, and then we got the ones that could act. And now some of the ones that are actors are becoming funny, so we're just <laughs> flushing out the whole cast. What category do I fit in? You that? are uh, not in season five, if you <laughs> get one. <laughs> so I... Uh, that's okay. Season coming. five. Uh, just everybody's gotten so good and, you know, so, so much funnier. And it's a comedy, so it's always about, you know, what's funny. And um, it's, it's a great group. I mean, you get guest stars. They leave after a couple days, and I'm always amazed that they're like, this was so much fun. And you wonder what's going on in other shows because we seem to have a fun group, and it seems to be relaxed. And maybe that's not the case sometimes. Um, and I think that's what we're all most proud of. Well, congratulations, first of all, on, on uh, four seasons, which is incredible. And uh, we all want season five and beyond for the CBC because we're, uh, we're counting on you, guys. Um, we're counting on you for CBC comedy because this is a great show that's very popular. Uh, we've got a quick question now about, and I don't know who to direct this one to exactly, um, anyone that's done uh, drama? Anyone that's done drama? Naomi, you've done some drama. I've known. I've been known to do some drama. Just Naomi home, was uh, killed in a Saw movie. Yes. Were you? That really? wasn't really a drama, though, was it? I didn't oh, know that's that. okay. Hard no, that's drama. kind of drama. Okay, yeah, I so was. I was killed in a Saw movie. Okay, so I'll rephrase this question. What's more fun, comedy or being killed in a Saw movie? <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's funny is like when you're on set, when we're all on set, we all sort of sit around and we'll go through a scene and go, how can we make this funnier? And in Saw movie, you're like, how can I make this grosser? And uh, then you like- gross. <laughs> 
Always the teacher? I don't know if oh, that's right. Oh, there it is. Jerry Super just gross. corrected her grammar during a question. You're gonna... I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I don't read. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you're always trying to like, bump things up a notch. So, I mean, it's all about the, the focus and the intensity of stuff, too. So, I don't know. It's the same. Just more, better. More better. Is that right? <laughs> okay, we're going to go to someone. We're going to go to someone that knows how to speak English. Yes, then. Good English. Mark? <laughs> What's that? Have you, done, have you done any drama? No. <laughs> all comedy all the time. I was offered a role as a man with Asperger's disease uh, in, uh, is that a disease, is it syndrome? Oh God. <laughs> it was actually a reality show. Yes, I was offered to be one You were offered a reality show to make like, up that you had autism. We want to highlight your existing Asperger's. And I said, uh, I don't have that. I was offered a role to play a guy with Asperger's in a movie. And I said, no. There would be nothing worse for the community <laughs> than you playing than a serious role doing of the Asperger's. Worst, the worst role. Oh, I would be terrible. <laughs> I would set that community back 10 years. <laughs> well, they would lose funding. <laughs> they would take funding back. All right, well, this, I didn't write that question, and we're going to move on to another one. Obviously, <laughs> comedy is more fun than drama. Whoever wrote this, you're fired. Um, would, uh, this is a good question. Uh, Shuresh. Yes. Would you date your character on Mr. Absolutely. D? Absolutely. Why? What? My own character. Yeah. No, what is, what is it about character. you that appeals to you? You stopped listening after would you date. I would, I, date. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, would, I would date her? Sure. No, I wouldn't date my own character. I think he's, uh, he's a unique and delicate flower, but he's certainly not for me. <laughs> you can dance. Let me ask Jerry, in the formation of the, the characters, we're all getting to know the, the characters now. Yeah. We have all got our favorites. But how, so you had the teachers in there. When did you start? Is Shiresh's character based on someone from your past as well? Uh, in a way, we had a, you know, I worked at the same school for 10 years and I did substituting for, nine years and I did substituting for one. But the general scope was the janitors, even when I went to school, or the custodians, I just found they never seemed to want to do what you, they were like. It was like walking on glass trying to, is there any chance you could put, you know, paper towels in the bathroom? So I was always afraid. So the secretary and the janitor seemed to run the school when I, when I was there, and it's kind of funny. So you always didn't want to ruffle their feathers, um, you know, if you lost your keys or you wanted something cleaned up, and, and that was kind of the character. Um, Lisa Mason, and all the characters are based on real teachers' names, their names, so Lisa Mason and my friend Steve Mason, and all the characters, uh, for the most part, are from real teachers I had or taught with. Um, Simon Hunt was, uh, Mr. Hunt was a teacher I had when I went to school. Um, so Lisa's character, just to get this clear, Lisa's character is based on a male on a man, character? Yeah, it doesn't, there's, a, there's legal That's reasons. That's interesting. There's legal reasons too. I mean, it, you know, I had to be careful. Uh, Bobby is, is also uh, based on a teacher I had, Ted Galka. So uh, the characters all come from some form of, form of reality for the most part. I taught with a, phys ed, a female phys ed teacher once who I, I didn't like but it was very by the book, uh, very on top of things all the time and probably taught phys ed the way you should. Uh, Simon Hunt is, uh, is really not based on anyone. Uh, I just wanted to get Mark Little on the show. <laughs> so I, based on a guy with Asperger's? How could he play the role and he's just done such a great job. And Lisa's kind of a combination of the perfect teacher that is you know, trained in the education system uh, what you all think teachers maybe should be like, planned every day, tests are handed back, the complete polar opposite of my character. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, so they're all, um, they're all based somewhat loosely or, or tightly in some cases on real characters, real okay. people. Thank you. Lauren, what's it like be, uh, being in the fourth season now in Mr. D? Is, it, is this the first sort of thing like this that you've done, the first kind of role like yeah, this? Yeah, this, this has been my, my first big thing that I, I've ever done. And um, it, it's, it's really neat because when you, when you film something, a lot of the times you're, you know, you'll feel really good about it and it might not end up the way that you feel about it or, or that sort of thing. So you kind of go into a show seeing, well, we'll see how it turns out. And then the, it turned out amazing, like first year, and then every single year it has felt funnier than the year before that when we were filming it. And it has been funnier every single year, and we've really hit a great stride, and 
And I just feel absolutely honored to be a, a part of this show. So thank you, Jerry. Um, thank but you. it's it's yeah, it's it's huge. So we we really think season four is a big leap. It's a big. We we jumped a big. Uh, I think it's by far our best season. You know, I think season three was a little better than season two, and season two was a little better than season one. But I think season four is really a lot better than season three. So we're excited, all of us. To, we did some, we tried some different things. We have a, a, a mockumentary episode where we, the actors all talk into the camera. We, uh, this, this student body is doing a, a sort of a digital sort of thing. So that was fun for us. We have an episode where we all switch characters. Uh, Jerry's an amazing teacher. Um, uh, Mr. Malik is an English teacher. Simon is the secretary. Bobby's the vice principal. So that was fun, and I think you'll enjoy that. And we did a hangover sort of episode because for some reason as a staff, we drank Thursday nights, which is a bad night to pick. So we would be very hungover Friday. So we have a little uh, a hangover episode where we all go to the staff party and then there's a bit of a, an homage at the same time to the movie, The Hangover, so it's kind of a backwards. So we've just done some neat things. There's one more I think we did um, that was kind of different, but the rest are, you know, are, are typical, funnier this time, I think. So it's exciting to see. Well, I know we can't wait. Mark Little. I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, I, I know what Jerry means. We've had you on the, the debaters as well, and you've got a you've you've got a different way of thinking, my friend. So you you get into this you get into this Simon character. No, I mean no, I mean it in, in a, a good, good way. way. Oh, thank God. Uh, when you get into this Simon character, you've been doing it for a few years now. Uh, how, how hard is it for you to get out of it? Because I know that you... How, have you ever walked around as Simon offset? <laughs> you have, haven't you? I think just like maybe in the minds of my extended family. <laughs> like whenever I go home for a reunion, I'm essentially Simon. Because I'll start to say something and they'll be like, uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Jerry remembers this because he says my character is based on nothing. But... Um, the first time we ever did a stand-up tour together, we were driving up to a uh, university in Nova Scotia. At a certain point in the drive, after Jerry had been bullying me for about two hours, he said, you know, if we went to high school together, I really would have pushed you into some lockers. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I might I feel like I feel like that might be what my character's based I don't on. Think I said that. You said that. I? I laughed. It was the good kind of bullying. <laughs> Are you allowed to talk about bullying in a positive way nowadays? Because I am. I Kids bully time. everyone. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure that's what we want you tweeting out. Uh, I, might, I might lose some of the context. Uh, now, there's the, there's the ongoing battle because you want to teach phys ed and the, that position never seems to come up. Uh, is, is that a real thing that you know of, of not just yourself but other teachers wanting to teach well, a different subject and they can't get into it? Yeah. I mean, we've done a lot of inside jokes on the show. We had a line once, one of my favorite lines was Darren Frost, who played a French teacher that we, we didn't have back. When we had only eight episodes last year, we had to cut a lot of the guests. But um, there was a great line that I thought, if you were a French teacher, you got it. He said, I don't speak French, I teach it. And if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher, you understand that joke because we are often thrown into subjects we don't really know, and you'll go to your principal, will call you in and say, look, I need you to do a grade nine math. And you're like, all right, and you go teach a grade nine math for a year. And you know, for me, unfortunately, I was, I did it the other way. I lied my first year to get a job, and they say, could you teach grade 12 history? And that's where the idea for the show came, because I spent three years teaching these subjects I knew nothing about. So that was the starting point of it all. Um, but teachers are often thrust into positions that they don't. And as a phys ed teacher and a background in phys ed, all I wanted was phys ed. So we, we amped it up on the show. Uh, you got a little taste of it last year. And you know, who knows where we'll go if we get another season, but I think eventually you'll see Jerry with maybe one phys ed class. We saw it last year. Uh, but yeah, teachers are often out of their element and would rather, I think every teacher would rather be, you know, teach something else, but we need you to do business, grade 12 business again. You're like, fine, I'll make that up for a year and talk about, you know, stuff. 
So grade 12 business is being made up by Sometimes, teachers that don't know anything. All right. Well, there's, there's you know, the, the reality of teaching is there are the quintessential teachers, the Lisa Masons, and then there are the Jerry Duncans, and that's every school. And there's a lot that fake it till you make it. Uh, there's, that's a ride. there's DVD players in, in schools. It's like, I got nothing today, I'm gonna show a movie. You make it sound like it's for the kids, but it's really for you, because you have really nothing to do. So it's, you know, what I, what I like about the show that's different, you know, there's been some teacher comedies in Britain and America that have or haven't worked. I think what we do differently is it really is written for teachers and students, and that's different. It's a lot of inside information that the public all seem to be getting because we've all been a, a student, unless you were homeschooled, and then you're just weird, so. Yeah, that's a whole, it's a really, whole other show. I don't really write, we don't write it for that. But um, <laughs> I think that's where we're hitting the right notes is, you know, not every teacher in the school likes it because we expose a lot of secrets, uh, but every teacher in the school probably knows about it, and that's as, you know, bad, bad, bad uh, press is good press, so that's kind of how I look at it. Any press is good, that's true. Any press is good press, especially in uh, Canadian entertainment. If they're talking about you, that's what you want. So you want to do stuff they're talking about. Now, all you guys are, are performers, and it is a, it's great. It's a very innovative way that Jerry's done it, because you will try to get actors and, and that try to teach them to be funny. You haven't had to do that. You got funny people and sort of wrote stuff for them. How tough was it as a comic and a performer to have someone else writing a character for you? How's, how's that feel? I'll go with Naomi first. Well, I mean, it wasn't, uh, it, it was a growing process, too, from season one. So as we all got to know each other, the characters became more full. So season one, you sort of, it's like watching, like, old Seinfeld. You yeah. see, like, Kramer burst through the door, and he doesn't burst through the door half as passionately as he did in season six. So it's the same sort of thing. The first year, we all sort of discovered our characters, and then now in the fourth year, the writers have much more of a clear voice with the characters. It's just more clear all around. Is it more clear all around, Shresh? Yes, I didn't really speak English in the first season, and now <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very uh, articulate and well-mannered individual, <laughs> jocular and inventive so the, with my puns and repartee. One thing I'll add about Suresh's character is uh, I used to work at the keg, and I was always amazed at the keg when I was a waiter. I would talk to the salad person or the dishwasher, and at this particular keg, there was a lot of them from Sri Lanka. So I got to know a little bit about Sri Lanka and, and the, the political strife there, obviously. But what I was amazed was they didn't speak English very well, but one guy was an engineer back home, one guy was a doctor. And they came here, and you assume because someone doesn't speak the language, you often could say, oh, this person can't be very bright. And so that was kind of a little bit of that is I was always impressed by these, these gentlemen and, and women that had done so much in their home country, and here they were, you know, washing dishes. It didn't mean they weren't bright, and that's kind of the same thing there. Just because he's a janitor doesn't mean he's not bright, and you'll see a little bit more of that in, in season four. Wow, I was not expecting, that's, that's a good answer, deep. Uh, <laughs> this, one's out of the, this one's out of the jar. I did not write this one. We're gonna ask this to Lauren, because I think, I think it's a oh, good no. one for the Lisa character. <laughs> Which golden girl represents you best? <laughs> In real life? <laughs> or, or as character, as if it's a different answer, we want both, but yeah, I, in real life. I, I, I have one, but I'll, I'll wait for one. Okay, Mark's gonna wait. Mark's been itching to be asked this question some uh, oh. Some of you need, do anyone need a reminder on who the Golden Girls are? How, how, I love Rose, the Golden you got Girls. Blanche. I love the Golden Girls. I, I think uh, Rose Bjorn. probably would, Rose. Be, would be Lisa. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people accepting that. In Golden real life, maybe a cross between Betty White and, <laughs> and Blanche, but... <laughs> No, was, no, I'm trying I'm to remember kidding. now. Was Sorry, Blanche, honey, my boyfriend's in the audience. Was, yeah, because yeah, that really gets boyfriends riled up I know, when you start I know. talking Golden Girls. Whoa, whoa, don't diss Rose. Uh, okay, Rose would be your answer then? All right. Mark, do you have an Blanche. answer for this? Blanche. She's the promiscuous one? Is that Blanche? Yeah. yeah. Which one was B. Arthur? Was she just B. Arthur? Did she no, have a character she had name? A name? She had a name? I thought, I thought she played She's herself. Sophia or Rose? Maude, maybe? Yeah. No, Sophia was the older one. Oh, yeah. There was Blanche and there was Rose and then there was B. Arthur. That was Dorothy. A, that was she was a, Dorothy. That was a Dorothy. That was a, I'm going to say Dorothy. Again, Dorothy. 
It's Dorothy. Dorothy Zabornak. That was a really great comedy. Like, it was, yeah. like when you look back at some of the episodes on that, it still translates. Like, it's still funny. I, I hope know, our like show's every like day that we walk onto the set of Mr. D and we say, ah, "Yes, we'll never be golden girls." <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's as good a mantra as any. Uh, this we're gonna have you guys complete a sentence, then I'm gonna get a couple questions from uh, the audience. So get your questions ready, and uh, then we're gonna. Um, uh, drink. I don't know what we're gonna do after this. Drink. Uh, it's tips on. There's probably parties to attend. <laughs> Bloody Caesars. Thank you, sir. Good contribution. Uh, you finish go. this sentence, and we're gonna go left to right. So, Shresh, we're putting you on the spot first. <laughs> Comedy is blank. Edutainment. <laughs> Edutainment. So a little bit, of, a little bit of smart, and a little bit of. Entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> you had that ready. That's I was weird. Say that no matter what the question was, I was going to say <laughs> edutainment. Jerry D is edutainment. Mr. D is edutainment. It's kind of a catch all. Edutainment. On the Chinese calendar, 2015 is the year of edutainment. <laughs> Recently, they found a vaccine for edutainment. edutainment. <laughs> uh, Lauren, what's comedy to you? Comedy Necessary. Is- Good answer. Wow. Jeez. You are my favorite. You are my favorite teacher that's not a real teacher. Mark Little, what's comedy? Golden Girls. Yep. Yep, I'll take that. I'll accept that. Naomi Sneakus, what's comedy? Um the way. That's two words. But the way. Like it's, if we it's were a, in a cult, a we would all be drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah. But it'd be super fun. I wouldn't drink the Kool-Aid. Well then you're not gonna have any fun. My mom always told me, don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know? There's no right or wrong answer. answer. Kids, this is not the debaters. Uh, we're moving on. Jerry D. I'd say very tough. Very tough. Yeah. I would say, uh, I've learned a sitcom is very tough to uh, have success with. Yeah. And I'd say stand-up's really tough too, but the sitcom is, it's tougher than I thought. And you take on... A, I don't know if everyone knows this, but you take on many roles. Producer, writer, you write a lot of the episodes yourself as well as acting in it. He and makes the lunches. He does you make the, you do catering, craft services. I didn't Never know that. Never stops working. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot, but it's, it's you know, it, it wouldn't be a tenth as good a show without the other people. And I don't mean the cast, obviously, but the writers. No, I don't, I don't agree. I think you could no, do it the without cast, these idiots. Yeah. yeah, obviously a show with one person would suck. But the, the writers, people always think I write you know, Jerry writes the show, but now I have a tremendous, you know, headed by a girl named Jesse Gabe, who's wonderful, and, but I have a great group of writers that, you know, piece it together. Season one, season two, a lot of it came from my head. I haven't taught for 10 years. You know, my stories teaching in the classroom are fading, and this year the writers really stepped up, and so it's a, it's a group effort. And I can say, yeah, I mean, I think I'm so frequently impressed by how much Jerry does on the show. I remember this one day this season when Jerry was applying my makeup, and I was just thinking, like, nice, nice. nice. Hire he did an amazing else. job. <laughs> and I was like, why is he in blackface? I don't understand. I, th- I, think, I think he got it right. I think he looked beautiful in that, in that episode. Uh, we've got time for how many? Couple, two or three? Two. We have time for two questions, so make them good, please. Sir, I was going to give you the mic, but there's 30 of us here. What am I? Just stand up and yell the question, please. Say who it's for and what paper you're from. And... Yeah. Probably. Influenced uh, I, by... I wasn't. Uh, but I admired what he did, and uh, Robin Williams was tremendous. Uh, I, he didn't influence me. It wasn't, you know, it's not the style of humor I do, um, but I don't know if anyone else... You know what? He actually... We, I used to perform at Second City just over there, and one night he turned up. Yeah, and... Stop plugging other shows. This oh, is no. the Mr. D panel, okay, all right? I'm so sorry. Um, but you guys, you can go over there and see free <laughs> improv right. anytime you want. Stop it! Um, so he turned up what improv set and improvised with us for an hour. And up till then, I was like, he inspired me because he, uh, he was ballsy, he was risky, and he just kind of went for it. And then when he in- improvised with us for an hour, he inspired me as a person because he wasn't, he wasn't a showman. He was just like, he wasn't like, I'm Ron Williams, I'm going to take the stage. He was like working with everybody like we were just colleagues. And I really appreciate that kind of level of involvement and inclusivity. And that's so much of our cast as well. Like we all sort of 
feed off each other. There's nobody that sort of grandstands and looks for, other than this guy. Oh, it's my show, that guy. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm the title of the show. But other than that, like I'd say he's a really, uh, yeah, I think he's inspiring for sure. Steve, I have a similar story. Okay, good, good. I remember when I was busking just around here. Yep. Oh, don't stop. Yeah. 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 And right. Robin Williams walked by me on his way to Second City. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, there he goes. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Good contribution. Yeah. Get caught for yourself. Yeah. And if I could just reiterate for the kids out there, just try bullying. Just give it a shot. Stop it! Stop talking about bullying. You're the weirdest science teacher I've ever met. Do you guys have any Robin Williams stories for this answer? Um, I, I, like a long time ago, used to do stand-up, and he, he very similarly like dropped by to do a set. And he was just such a kind man, and I think it, it, it really affected a lot of people on set when he passed away. And I still have a hard time not tearing up about it because he's, he's just given so much joy uh, and, and happiness and entertainment to so many people. And, and for him to go out like that, I think is really sad. Yeah, well said. I want to point out that Lauren's the only one that's kept the CBC, I'm a CBC fan paddle in her hands the entire time. <laughs> Textbook, oh, and now Mark Little enters the fray. <laughs> we have time. We have time for one more question. Please don't direct it to Mark Little. We can have a couple first more, of, no? We a maybe a couple. First of, first of all, lovely outfit, not a question. Well done. Thank you for bringing some class into this place. Uh, what's your question and who's it for? Uh, actually, Jerry, two things. Thank you for your show. You're welcome. Because Thank you for watching. Secondly, I've got two nephews on the West Coast who watch you faithfully. Oh, good. So thank you to all of you because my nephews are in school, struggle with their education. And because of all of you, my, brother, my nephews are actually getting tutored, especially the oldest one, Michael, is getting tutored in his education, so he can be a teacher. And he loves comedy, so don't push the limits. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Well, good luck to um, him, that's great. With dyslexia, my brother had it, and Michael, <clears throat> Michael's got it, but uh, the boys watch this faithfully, so thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you. Second thing is, who is it that has inspired you the most, um, not as a teacher for your, for your series, but as a comedian? Well, for me, it was John Candy. John Candy was uh, the... Second City, right over there. <laughs> um, John Candy, uh, I, you know, I grew up with John Candy, John Ritter, Michael J. Fox. Those are the three I always talk about um, that I, would, I just loved, and there are three different styles of comedy. Uh, but John Candy could make a movie with one line, and that's very hard to do. It's hard, very hard to make a scene with one line, like to steal a scene, and uh, just walking into the frame, he was funny. So uh, never met him, wish I did, but that to me was the person that, uh, I never followed stand-up comedy. I followed comedic actors, and that was the guy that, for me, was uh, the best of the best. You met him. Well. <laughs> It wasn't a very glamorous, but I was, um, I was Smurfette in the Oktoberfest parade, and uh, <laughs> he was the Schmanky Brothers, yeah. and so, yeah, I met him. And, and I think what's most interesting to me about John, John was also known as a very kind, humble, not typical of this industry, um, in, most case, in a lot of cases, and he was just a regular guy, and that's, so, so that's an important thing to, that, that for me that I liked about him, too. Do we have time for a couple? Of, thank you. And if I could the just share a John shirt. Candy story. No, really you can't. Do we have a, what does Remember, that mean? I We're was, perfect. Was I don't know if that means no more questions or perfect. <laughs> we the do man in the blue shirt sure seems yeah. yeah. yes. sure too. Go ahead, On sir. Getting some feedback, but just if I could cut you off. I was no. busking. <laughs> I was busking right around the corner. And John Candy walked by me, and I just thought, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, sir. I, I just want to say I'm a big fan, big fan of, well, not just Jerry, but of everyone, of course. Thank you. And uh, I myself am a new teacher, uh, just going into my second year, and it just so happens I'm going to be teaching physical education. Nice. <laughs> nice. Here's the thing, though. I teach for a small independent school for uh, special needs learners. Part of physical education is, is topics like sexual health and stuff like that. So my question, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. I want to know from the master, Teaching sex ed can be a little bit awkward. It can be a little bit more awkward when teaching it to kids with 
Uh, not, it's not called um, uh, Asperger's disorder. It's now called autism spectrum disorder. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to bully, kids. Remember to bully. Remember to bully. Everyone bully Mark Little. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, I want to learn from the master. What advice can you give me when it comes to teaching special, special needs learners sex with tech kids? Sex with <laughs> Sorry, Jerry's been well, hoping someone what, would ask it's a yeah, nebulous whether, question. Whether they're special <laughs> needs or not, you know, yeah, it was, it was, the, the irony of, the toughest part for me was I taught in a Catholic school and I had to teach sex education. And it was a bit of an oxymoron at times because, you know, you're supposed to be following the rules of the Catholic Church and like, you know, at the time I'm 35, trying in a roundabout way, say, you know, I'm waiting till I get married, because they're in grade seven or eight, but it's a lie, right? It's a lie, hate to break it to you, but I, I did, before 35, I did. Jerry! Yeah. Yeah, I, I told Let's you wrap differently. This up. But the, I, I never was comfortable teaching it to any kids, special needs or not. Um, and I remember the one day I, I had these grade seven girls and boys and they were sitting there and I wrote on the board 10 things about, we were talking about dating, when to date, what's a good age. And I wrote 10 things on the board. I said, the first date you talk, that's it. The second date you can hold hands. The third, and they're like, <laughs> you know, they're pretty with it in grade eight, right? Some of them were having, you know. <laughs> no, they were, that's the sad thing. And then I got the third, third, <laughs> Point three, you can kiss. And they're like, come on, are you serious? Yes, these are the rules that you should have. <laughs> you know, it was, the, it was the dad in me talking to. And then when I got to the 10th point, I said, you can open mouth kiss, and then you break up. You go back to the new person. <laughs> so, uh, so I tried, uh, you know, I, I have two daughters. I, I dread the day. There you go. Yeah, and that's the rules. So you go out 10 dates, and then you can, Anyway, she's probably, how old are you? 11, you don't have to worry about it for it's 10 years. Um, but I have, uh, I have two daughters and it terrifies every dad that has daughters to go, you know, so. But I try to make fun with it, have fun with it. I don't know special needs, there's such a wide spectrum of special needs, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'd be worried about the kids with Tourette's when I'm teaching special needs and what they're gonna yell out. But you might have to follow up with something there. I don't know, I mean, it's such a wide range uh, but I would teach it the way you would teach it to anyone. And it's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's not fun uh, because you can't get too anatomical. You know, but the, the penis is a very important part. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? But that, no, that's a lot. It is right? a funny word. No, it's that's a funny a word. Yeah. Right. It's okay. It's okay to laugh at penis. Yep. It's okay. No, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not fun. But what grade are you in? Grade six? Seven. You'll learn this this year. Penis. Mark Little is actually teaching over there, busking. But yeah. yeah, Mark Little is doing busking sexual phys ed at a corner. I uh, do special bus needs. For yes. special yeah. needs. It has recently been determined that it is not a form of sexual assault for me to teach <laughs> busking phys ed. I feel like the I just... The uh, posters are all wrong, though. What's that? Yeah, the posters are all wrong anatomically. The posters are wrong anatomically. Everyone has penises. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question. I'm going to guess you know no. I've got a 10-step thing as a perfect <laughs> <laughs> I had a girl, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll you plug her ears, I don't know. I mean, I had a kid ask me, it's a real story, grade seven, said, sir, what's oral sex? And I said, it's when you talk a lot about sex. And I, was like, <laughs> That's, I just lied. Let someone else tell you that. Now, I don't know how old that little girl is, but she's not having fun over there, but... I okay. think uh, tough crowd, tough crowd. Uh, I think uh, I have something to add. My, my mom uh, was a bus driver for disabled and, and special needs and that sort of thing. And I think one thing is that if you keep in mind while you're teaching it that if you don't teach them these things, then somebody else might. It, it, it's, it's, it's such like, an, <laughs> it, yes, it, it, it's such an important job. It's so important. So. That might actually be a great program if you don't teach yeah. them. Mark Little will. Yeah. <laughs> And I think we're really going to improve the, to the teaching. That's a great question. Tough, tough question for this light uh, daytime uh, panel. But um, 
I think well handled by everyone on the panel. And, and what a confidently asked question. Really well said. We're well, the ones with microphones. He had the loudest voice in the room. I loved it. I love that's it. That's excellent projection. Anyone uh, else? Is there anyone else? I mean, you, you're good? Okay. Uh, so that is... There's no other questions right now, but we do have... Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here yeah, at this thank panel. You. Thank you so much. Everyone uh, on the panel here is going to make their way over to the red carpet on the other side of the room for a... For a... For a sorry? Sorry, the panel's going to move over to the red carpet. Everyone here, please stay seated for a few minutes. We're going to have a meet and tweet uh, session where we'll have photos taken over there with uh, the stars of Mr. D. But Mark Little has an announcement it first. Just, and when this is all done, I'll be right across the street. So <laughs> Let's hear it for the stars of Mr. D. Thank you for joining us. Fall for CBC.